everyone, The Flying Scotsman here and welcome to this video. Now, I wasn't originally planning to do this, but um, I have felt myself be motivated after seeing a few other YouTubers doing this to do a Sep Tandy video. Now, um, of course, I don't have any Tandy equipment and, well, in the UK, we did have the uh, Tandy franchise, except it was the um, the stores that were called Tandy, and I do believe we did have Tandy computers as well. But uh, but yeah, no Tandy. Uh, generally, it was more of an electronics shop, like um, the like of Curry's and Dixon's, uh, places like that, rather than being a electronic component shop like um, Maplin used to be. Maplin was uh, basically our equivalent um, of Radio Shack. You know, you would go there if you wanted to buy yourself some electronic components like capacitors or resistors or uh, basically anything like that. And in the mid-2000s, LEDs of every colour <laughs> uh, before the now ubiquitous RGB LEDs. <laughs> but anyway... So, yeah, Tandy was a thing over here, but um, I'm not here to talk necessarily about the history of Tandy in the United Kingdom. I know I, I know that there's uh, certain uh, billies among you who would probably uh, be uh, quite interested if I did that, but unfortunately, um, I'd not be as good at that as Billy, but as he has little knowledge of uh, Tandy shops in the UK... I don't think we'll be seeing that video. Anyway, what um, what I am going to talk about is something that, you know, I'd like to think that I know something about. Ease of use on computer systems. Now, obviously, Tandy, when when they, well, Radio Shack, when they brought out, um, you know, their Tandy range of PCs, and, and even the Coco, they started to have... Um, they, they started to come with an innovative piece of software that was in some ways quite ahead of its time uh, called Tandy Deskmate. Like I said, it was on the Tandy uh, TRS um, series of machines as well as the their x86 range of machines. And um, what we have here is a PCM machine. It's a Tandy 1000 SL2 with uh, what I'm sure is the wrong version of Tandy Deskmate. Uh, what I've done is I've made one uh, probably with the wrong specs as well. It's 8 megahertz, 640k of RAM. Um, I've uh, thrown a 50 meg hard drive at it, around 50. And um, I've installed Tandy Deskmate 3. And that is what we are going to look at now. So, obviously on real Tandy hardware, on you know the computers that shipped with Deskmate, it would come... I believe it, you know, you, some machines it probably came in RAM, ROM rather, but um, you could also install it. And and the thing about Deskmate is that it does work on non-Tandy computers. I've, I've actually had Deskmate running on a Compaq machine before today. So with, with the Tandy machines, though, some machines, you can actually boot them straight into Deskmate, like... At a BIOS level. Um, in fact, I could probably show you that um, by running the setup sl command. Um, right, press any key to continue. Um, video display, automatic prompt for date and time. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe I can't get this machine to automatically run Deskmate. Um, but I would be able to if I... Um, I would be able to if I actually added um, the desk executable to auto-exec. But anyway, um, on some Tandy machines, I, I do believe you could, in fact, run Deskmate or have it run Deskmate on startup. So let's run that now. Deskmate, um, it did use Tandy's excellent sound and graphics capabilities. 
And while he had some versions of Deskmate that would, in fact, um, allow you to compose music or, um, or even record stuff, I can't get that to work in this version of Deskmate. But what? But that isn't to say that this this version of Deskmate is um, useless, because it isn't. A lot of you will know that I'm all for a computer that you can use straight out of the box. And by that, you know, partially by that, what I mean is put some software on it that you can get to using straight away out of the box without having to buy it and install it and what have you. Just, you know, I mean, in, instead of all the draw shit computers come with nowadays, you, you just put, you know, have a reasonably reasonable word processor, spreadsheet, you know, things like that. And, um, well, Deskmate does not disappoint. Now, the date is obviously incorrect. Um, because this uh, VM doesn't actually, um, have a, um, this VM doesn't actually have a backup battery, but we, we can sort that out a bit later. But now, let's have a look at the, the Deskmate. So as you can see, we have um, we have the main elements of a UI. We have windows, like this one here, this one here. We've got the calendar there, menus. Yep, got that. Um, icons. Well, we've got the uh, mortarboard here. Never known anyone to wear a white mortarboard though. Um, and we have a pointer, which I'm moving about the screen. Um, so from here you've got access to programs now we can populate this list if we actually change the directory that deskmate is working in um, and if we actually what we can actually do here is if we go to deskmate then it will now load you've got any uh, documents there and you have some programs and, and I've got a I've got to say, there there is a lot of programs on here that um, that you can actually get stuck into. Um, you know, and we will have a look at those. Um, this is the default color scheme it comes with. As you can see, it's um, it's got a nice number of colors, and and that is taking advantage of Tandy's uh, unique graphics card, which um, allows support for 16 colors at 320 by 240 pixels or even or um, you could have four colors at 600 640 by 400 and well well some kind of uh, 640 pixel resolution I forget what it was exactly um but uh, from here you can uh, you can get information about programs or documents. So let's uh, so we look at DMVid. So get info. There we go. It's uh, modified in nineteen eighty nine. So this version of Deskmate really is too new for the computer. You can update the screen. That's uh, that's quite good. Um, you can delete documents, rename. In fact, you can actually, you've got a couple of different views of the main deskmate screen. You've got the menus, the, that's the screen we're in now. You can either do trees or you can do files, which obviously you can just kind of click on the folder anyway. And, and you've got a file manager and again, we can go back. Uh, we can go back to that because there's some quite interesting stuff in there. Um, obviously, you can sort stuff. Well, if you're in the file manager view, you can sort stuff by name and date, and what have you. Um, you've got desktop, so you can. There would have been programs that are actually compatible with Tandy Deskmate, and um, you could install them from here. Uh, Tandy Deskmate executables used a dot pdm uh file extension I, I'm, I'm guessing that stands for program for deskmate um you have uh display menu so menus corkboard 
draw. Uh, draw. Oh, right. I wonder if you can actually... Uh, you can, I think I think you can actually display. So I'm guessing that that would um, show you documents that you've made with um, a given program. In fact, yeah, that that does seem to be a thing because you've got text here. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, you can move items around. You can remove them you can uh, create stuff uh, create a menu um, create a quick load so I guess I could um, let's see if I wanted to create um, a shortcut to worksheet um, oh right <laughs> Then I've just got uh, I've just got that. Um, I just want to I just want to. Oh dear, <laughs> that's torn it. So I've just deleted one of my buttons. Oh well, never mind. Um, so yeah, you redefine something. Um, but yeah, and then you've got your, um, you have, uh, on this side, you've got set up, uh, set up so you can change various things about Tandy Deskmate. So mouse settings, you could change the, um, pointing device, the double click speed, what serial port it's on. If you had a modem, you could, uh, change you could actually uh, tell it, tell the computer where it is. So you could say, oh, if I've got a Hayes modem on COM2, then that's absolutely fine. That's quite important. Um, then we've got the date and time. So let's see, we can change the date and time to actually be correct. So um, what I will do is I'll go 09, 12, 2020 at... Um, 0755 and that's p.m. Used to doing it in 24 hours. And you can change the colors as well. You can actually get um, you can actually get some pretty good um, ranges of colors here. So um, so for example, the um, text for foreground is yellow. Okay. Um, menu bar background, menu bar foreground, alternative. Bar. Oh, wow, <laughs> it's just kind of ran away with me. Never mind. So got menu bar foreground what I could do is I could change that so it was uh, change that so it was gold or something or even purple I could change the uh, brightness of that so I could make it so it was bright red So yeah, there's there's a fair amount of customization in here, and that's something that I would have been absolutely besotted with as a kid. <laughs> um, but I like how you've got little widgets in here, like your spell checker. So uh, not sure how that works. So I guess we could open this file here, dmvid doc. David driver name oh look at that desk mate's not even in there so that that's an outboard spell checker actually so you i guess you'd type your document and then you'd run it through the spell checker rather than it being intrinsic to your um word processor which 
makes sense. I mean, a lot a lot of programs were outboard. Like, you know, you used to have uh, Microsoft Graph, which used to be um, a companion program to Excel rather than being a part of what Excel can do. Right. Anyway, let's have a look at uh, some of the other things. You've got... Um, You've got the address book, so that's that's pretty cool. You um, so you could use your computer as a personal information manager. So I could put um, oh yeah, that's right. He got uh, he got given a peerage. Um. So, dates to remember, well, of course his birth date is on, his birth date is on <clears throat> this guy runs the this king's turn <laughs> the Kensington country club ad <laughs> important fellow in king ah Oh, right, I guess that's, that'd be his uh, address, actually, so, um, so, I guess, where, where is he? Um, where could I? Where could I have him bide? Um, that's this. This is obviously not a real address. <laughs> I do, I don't know. <laughs> so we've got. So there we go. We've we've saved um, we we've saved uh, Lord Blobworth's uh, name and address. It's 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 good to be well connected. Um, <laughs> so now he's in my address book as Blobworth dot Tim. <laughs> um, so next we'll have a look at um, oh, what is it saying? Hmm. I wonder what these marks are there for. Oh, that's well. Let's see. We've got um, got an appointment for the twentieth. Uh, so um, let's add that. Um, so that's. I would say that's uh, 12 p.m. till about um, 7 p.m. And it's the let's let's see the Blobworth Estate Dinner Function. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, of course. <laughs> I'm I'm used to doing this in uh, in twenty four hour time. So um. So uh, nineteen o'clock is actually seven o'clock. <clears throat> Guys, if you want to know what the time is in military time or twenty four hour time, you know it, it's PM. Just Sub, uh, subtract 12 from the hour and then you'll get it, you know? So 19 o'clock, 19 minus 12 is 7. There you go. Um, so that's there. To allow calendar alarms to function, go into the alarm accessory and turn on the alarm. And look, he has been added. The Blobworth Estate Dinner function. That's fantastic and this this is all from your computer back when most IBM compatibles were actually hell of a difficult to use so let's turn the alarm on <laughs> um so now if my computer's on it will tell me, hey, Jay, you've got to go to that dinner. And I'll be like, James, that's in the southeast of England, and I'm in I'm in Aberdeen where my computer is, and <laughs> how am I going to get there? Anyway, so we've done some basic uh, PIM uh, functionality, personal information manager. You might notice this link. Now, this is PC link. Now, remember I was talking about a modem? This is my, why you might want one. This is essentially the Tandy Deskmate version of um, Quantum Link. And Quantum Link, as some of you may know, uh, I mean, it was originally set up on, it was originally for the Commodore 64 and uh, Geos. Uh, Geos, was it? Yeah, Geos. Um, and it later became america online all right well so there you go that was uh, a version of that was here bundled with it um we've had a look at addresses and calendars but did you know that um this um dandy deskmate environment came with um, a desktop which will just take you back to where you are here that's a bit confusing for uh, the uninitiated you have a painting program you have a database so you can either make forms or you can fill out for uh, already existing forms so basically i think you'd go into form set to create your database and then you'd go into filer to um to populate it you even have a wee game hang hangman uh, mail merge, that's pretty good. That must be uh, merging, uh, merging mail through, through your address book. Um, you've got uh, Teach Me, which is Play Telecom, which um, I think that's just uh, phone stuff. Um, and you have a text editor. And a spreadsheet program. So let's go into the text editor first. So um, let's see what we can do. Um, so we we can uh, center it. We can uh, do layout stuff, but I don't think we can uh, necessarily do fonts. We have proofing and a thesaurus. So maybe this does have a spell checker in it. That's Good to know. Um, there we go. So I guess I could uh, write something. All right. So it's uh, giving me a wee marker saying that it's centered.
Okay, so uh, I've written something, so let's see if we can uh, check it. Okay, so rollout is not correct, so... Um, what I could do is just add that to the dictionary if I really wanted that. Um, desk mate. Definitely want to add that to the dictionary. I before E, except after C. Yeah, I did that deliberately. Um, so, yep, I want to... Uh, do I wish to save changes? Yes, yeah, okay. And there we go. And... Let's... Yep, well received, and it's um, it's actually corrected it. Excellent. Um, translate. <laughs> See your store dealer for more information. Ah, right. Okay, so this is uh, setting. Uh, this is giving me options that I don't actually have. So I'd have to go back to Radio Shack and be like, "Hey, I need the translation package." I like that. I can change it to ASCII. That would make it compatible. That would have made it compatible back in the day with a wider array of uh, computer systems. That's uh, that's pretty good. Okay, so I can save this. Um, um Excellent, so I've done that. So now we can have a look at the uh, worksheet. Now I'm not sure how easy it would be to use because I've only ever used Microsoft stuff. And uh, with having a mess about with Lotus 1, 2, 3, none of the Microsoft formula seemed to work. So I could do my monthly projections. So, hang on, let's see. So, month. Figs. Okay, so in January we had uh, 12 of whatever it was, February we had uh, 24 of whatever it was that we sell because Valentine's Day, uh, March we had 36, um, actually no we didn't, no, Mar uh, we, we only had like 25 in March, so um, April we were well down because we were all in lockdown, so uh, <laughs> actually we didn't have any. It's 2020, it's been a difficult year for us all. Uh, May we had one. June we had three. July we had seven. August we had 14 of whatever it was. September we 24. Some. So, I guess I would need the big thick manual for this sum. So these cells aren't lettered. <laughs> Invalid formula, re-edit. So, I've just pressed F1. Sorry, no help available for this box. So we've got a bunch of figures, and now it's going to look for. <laughs> How can I calculate my spreadsheet?
Oh, that's nice. Okay, so that's good. So, let's use the drawing program. I wish the music programs were available on this version of Deskmate. You even have some rudimentary clip art. So, let me show you that. Look at that. So, I could take this could make a fancy wee banner so uh, we've got the camera and I could use some text that's pretty cool um, whoops and there's no undo option so yeah that's that's something to live with. Um, but I can select stuff. This is, well, this does seem to be a vector-based drawing program, it, it would seem, rather than something that is bitmap. Ah, could be a good... <laughs> right, good. So I've got the text now. I can select it. And I can... I can actually drop that somewhere else. I might want to actually change the font... So I will do that. Maybe I don't like this font, so I'm going to use that one. Nope, perhaps I like that even less. That's very much like a typewriter. Let's have a look and see what Dixon looks like. Oh, ah, there we go. That's, uh, that's quite nice, even if it, even if it does look a bit my first computer project so yeah I think actually what I will do I'll go back to the first um, font that we had and there we go Jay's photography group and what I hope to do with that is we'll change we'll change the uh, color so Pattern background. Can I change this to white? Actually, um, maybe not. Um, so let's see if I can change. <laughs> That's. Uh, not wanting to come quietly, because I wanted a blue camera. And what I've got is a more yellow one. So now the camera does not look right. <laughs> Alright, so <laughs> there we go you know what I'll just just for good measure I'll drop a line under here there we go <laughs> okay now that looks so that looks so amateur oh come on there we go that's fine <laughs> So with the database, I don't think I'm going to try and make a form, but what I can do is show you one that's already been made, because I did come across one, 
Um, and it looked pretty impressive for what it was. So I will go into Filer and you have two databases. Um, so car maintenance. So if we click OK, look at that lovely picture of a car. So car put Chevrolet citation date um, so service by but potentially <laughs> um, next scheduled um, I don't know but uh, mileage 20 24 do, 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 do. so cost was a hundred dollars One dollars. <laughs> um, so put in a new put air in the tires. <laughs> Easiest hundred bucks I ever made don't feel bad don't feel bad for the owner of the chevy citation they shouldn't have got a car named after a court summons <laughs> so i guess i guess that will do it well no no maybe not maybe not i oh, know He's got more. I've been set in front of this video for about five hours and it's there's nothing new that I've learned. Hangman. And I really am no good at this. I'm normally pretty good with word games, but this uh no. Um Let's see. <coughs> oh. Define. Define. All right. Okay. So, um, number of guesses. So, okay. V. Why did I put V? Padre. Please wait while the word is chosen. This takes an age. So you get the idea. It's hangman. Consumers. <laughs> Please wait while the word is chosen. E. Ah, B I A. Nice one. So I've actually been able to get it. Would you look at that? Anyway, I think on that note, I will end this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this Septandy video. Um, I will try and put in the comments all the people who have done a Septandy uh, video this year. Um, I'm sorry if I miss you out, but um, I know that uh, the Lazy Game Reviewer has done one, and uh, so has uh, 
Tech Tangent and quite a few others. I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. I have seen quite a few others so far, though, and uh, they've all been pretty damn good. And I've, I've really enjoyed it. I do, I, I do quite like the Tandy brand of machines. I, I like what they did, um, you know, bringing, helping to bring computers to the masses and make them easier to use and so on and so forth. It's just a shame that the joysticks were a wee bit, um, shall we say, not so very good. But um, that said, I, I actually, yeah, I completely forgot. I did have the chance once, I think it was 2012, to own a Tandy word processor. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't have the cash at the time, so um, I think it was a WP100 or something along those lines. Um, but I did get to have a shot of it, and um, it was pretty good. Really, it was. Um, I, I thought it was a Tandy uh, portable, so I was trying to write programming code basic into it, and it's just like, it's just a red processor, what do you think I'm trying to do? Anyway, that is the end of this video. I hope you'll all join me for my next one. Cheerio, bye.